Yeah, it's going to be less scary for sure. What's up?
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this show on the road. We have a very crowded room. We got to get you all back out there playing games. So let's go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for coming to the EMU and EECS 494 Student Game Showcase. We do this twice a year, one at the end of each semester. And, well, geez, what a crowd, right? You make games so that other people can play them, so that they can have a unique experience, learn more about themselves, make interesting decisions, okay? And you're going to get to do that tonight. We have some phenomenal games, quite a few of them out there. And, again, you're going to need all the time you can get to play those games. So let's get started, okay? What on earth is this? Well, it's the showcase, right? You go out there, you play a bunch of games. Hopefully it's not too crowded. The staff, the facilities did a wonderful job spacing things out. Uh, and um, there's a lot of really, really great booths. There are giveaways. Uh, there are prizes for the teams to win. On the pillars out there, you'll notice a QR code. You scan it, you get to vote for your favorite games, and they get fabulous prizes uh, when they win, okay? Uh, it's also just generally a really fun night. So don't worry, the voting does not affect grades at all. It's just for fun. But it's really fun to win, right? So um, we've got uh, students who have dressed up, right? Uh, they have decorated their booth. They've got balloons a bit out there. I see them hanging. Team, who did the balloons? What do the balloons spell out? Anyone know? Hi. Oh, hi. Oh, it's the water. Let's go. Very good. Um. And it can get a bit crazy, okay? I thought I saw a few pretty cool costumes out there, uh, and you'll see them soon too, all right? This showcase is virtual as well, okay? Uh, if you're watching from home or if you want to play these games uh, over the summer, you can find these games at 494showcase.com. This is also where you'll do your voting, okay? A quick spiel. What on earth is this? What is X 494? Well, it's a game dev course, okay? And this is the process. In the first three weeks, we teach students. Has anyone played this game before? I'm a little familiar to anyone? Okay, a little bit. Um, but have you ever seen it like this with a motorbike? <laughs> Maybe not, okay? In the first three weeks of the course, we teach students how to get a game running, how to build a game technologically, very fast to ramp up. Um, and then they add some custom content to it, okay? In this case, a motorbike uh, that is fabulously introduced, right? Step by step through this dungeon, you learn about the motorbike's capabilities in a safe fashion before then being put to the test. That's good player guidance. You're going to see a lot of that out there tonight, okay? The students then go on to make bigger and better projects. Their teams expand, and then they eventually build the big games that you're going to see out there tonight. Sometimes those games get even bigger. On a couple of occasions, our games, our P3 final games out there, go on to launch in marketplaces. They go on to get publishing deals, okay? This is the real deal, and our students work extremely hard to make that happen, okay? To make tonight happen. So this isn't just entertainment, though, okay? You think games, you think entertainment, right? Great memories, fun. But it can be more than that. Has anyone gone to this building, Spark, downtown? It's an economic incubator. We're very fortunate to have a great one, okay? And if you go to this incubator, you'll find lots of programs and lots of startups using game dev techniques and technologies for really, really cool purposes, okay? For visualizing social media networks as they grow and expand over time. For visualizing some mobile phone interaction data. Okay, watching the heat map fill up as you interact with the screen. You can use all of this knowledge, this game dev knowledge, for many different things. Okay, this one of my favorites, T and Min Fan, they were in the Ginger Deli downtown. Uh, really, really cool people. They used 494 and Wolverine Soft student talent uh, to make a visualization for your wedding. So you can plan it all out before you drop the big bucks. Okay. Has anyone played The Sims? You know, I'm a fan of that franchise, uh, and this reminds me a lot of that. Really, really cool stuff. This one is amazing. Christina York, her team downtown, she made an AR application that basically is meant for pediatric medical care. 
When a kid, a little kid, comes in, has a scary operation, a medical procedure to deal with, um, this calms them down. It brings pocketbooks to life. It distracts them. It focuses them. It's extremely human uh, use case for game dev tech. Okay? This is one of my favorite moments. Game dev techniques and technologies have begun spreading everywhere. They just haven't begun, right? They were there for a long time. Steve Jobs, Macworld 2000. I'm going to show you a moment from that presentation, okay? And I want you to listen to how the crowd reacts, all right? How the crowd reacts to just a little bit of juice getting into Mac OS X. Let's take a look. I can put anything in here I want. I can put websites. I can put documents. I can put anything, applications, anything that I use, and I can rearrange it at will. And the doc just accommodates anything I want. And I drag something out, it gets bigger. Now, a question would be: Well, how small can it get? Well, it can get pretty small, actually. Uh, you can actually set the maximum tile size, and it'll shrink from there if you have more stuff. But you can actually say, well, it'll get really small. I can hold like 128 things here. Uh, how would I ever see them, though, if they get this small, or if I even prefer them this small? Well, we have something we call magnification, which works kind of like this. <laughs> They are on their feet. <laughs> For an operating system feature. Right? But, I mean, that's the power. That's the artistry of it all. You, when you're making a game, you add a lot of interesting little effects like this. You make your game juicier. You get more personality, more charm. Right? Maximum output for the minimum input. And that's what brings your game, your experience, your world, your characters, your menus even, to life. So it's no surprise that we're starting to see that everywhere, even in operating systems, okay? Super, super cool stuff, and now our students know how to do all this. It's not just engineering, though. This is an MBE capstone, lots of stuff going on. They do uh, project management, JIRA, right? They allocate resources, they assign tasks, make sure you don't step on anyone's toes, right? You also do artistry, okay? This is an engineering course, but first impressions do matter. And there's a lot of very, very interesting stuff to learn when it comes to marrying your code uh, to the way your game looks, okay? Uh, it's very, very fun stuff. Music as well. Music is the key, the fastest route to the player's heart. And so our students spend a lot of time thinking about that too, all right? And of course, design, paper prototyping in this case. Can you figure out if your design is going to work before you drop the hours, the money, to program it, okay? Don't want to be wasteful, all right? I want to show you one of the most beautiful uses for game dev tech and technology I've seen in a very long time, okay? We're almost there. We're almost to trailers. This is Dr. Krishnan's uh, U, uh, Michigan Medicine a Neuro VR Laboratory. This uses virtual reality for rehabilitation uh, for patients, and I think you'll get a feel for it uh, when I show you this video.
Neuro VR, a beautiful use of technology, makes a lot of sense for rehab. You can track player performance over time. You can increase difficulty mode. You can randomize elements of the task. You can do a lot of incredible things with the software. Would you believe me if I told you that it was made by pretty much just one Michigan undergraduate student? Daniel Kordemeyer was one of my star students. He still is. Love the guy. Um, unfortunately, uh, he passed away. Uh, he passed away in 2020. He passed away very suddenly. It was a very shocking loss. And it was, you know, it took so much from our state. He was going to work in Lansing, TechSmith, right? Incredible man. Great character. Extraordinarily talented, okay? Um, and uh, he was the kind of guy who loved events like this, loved competition. His game, Turbo Neon, right here with his team. And um, it's, it's really just, it hurts that we lost him. Um, his impact is still here, though. His impact, his inspiration is still around. His game will be relaunching today. It's going to be online. You can play it, all right? In fact, you'll find it right here on the showcase website, right at the top. Turbo Neon, in memory of Daniel Kordemeyer. And I want to show you his trailer, okay, before anyone else. Here it is. What a cool game. What a fantastic game. And it, it really warms my heart that like Daniel goes and makes that and then he turns around and he builds this wonderful, wonderful piece of software as well, NeuroVR. Um, Daniel's family supports our course, right? They believe in game dev too. Uh, and so it's my honor to talk about Daniel uh, and his impact every single semester and I'm gonna keep doing that, okay? Um, and I hope that if you have time, maybe over the summer or tonight, you'll give Turbo Neon a shot, a fan, fan, fantastic game. Okay, we're not alone here. We are joined by the fabulous program at Eastern Michigan University in Simulation, Animation, and Gaming Program, a TA from their most fantastic courses. Connor Spears is here to give a few words on the program. Uh, and uh, so thank you so much for being here, Connor. Go for it. Thank you for having me. It's all kind of short notice, me being up here, but um, I want to say that I have been a TA for one semester now. This is my first semester. Um, we got a new professor, David Batista, um, Corbin Reeves. You all might be familiar with him. He was teaching it for, I don't even know how long. A long time. A long time. Um, greatest professor I've ever had, and uh, it's a shame that Eastern lost him, but anyways, we're starting anew, and I'm trying to keep that tradition alive by... Um, continuing to have our students come to the showcase as when I was here, God, a year and a half, two years ago now, um, it was literally like the greatest thing I've ever done. Uh, I couldn't, it made me want to make games more, seeing other people have so happy playing my game, even if my game was not great, as I had no programming experience like most SAG students, um, which, you know, take that as what you will, you know, you all are computer science majors, most of these students are 3D artists learning programming for the very first time. So we like to give, you know, a little gaming in the simulation, animation, and gaming department by having Unity 1 and Unity 2. Um, tonight, I think, I don't know, if, I don't think we have any students from Unity 2, but they were welcome to showcase if they wanted to. Um, so they'll be here with you all today. Yeah. Thank you, Connor. <laughs> Connor brought up an excellent point, right? When you see people play your game, it refuels you as a developer, as a creative. 
when you're playing the students' games tonight, look over the table at them watching. You'll see smiles if you encounter a bug, hopefully nervous laughter, uh, <laughs> and ask them why they made certain decisions, right? Those questions are just amazing, right? Um, and uh, all right. Um, so we also have Wolverine Soft Studio here with us, not just 494 or EMU, Dubsoft Studio, which is a student-run student org, okay? They manage it all. Uh, and we have some phenomenal uh, guests. Uh, come on and um, uh, tell us about what uh, what's happened this semester. Thanks, Austin. Um, hey, guys. I'm MQ, director of Wolverine Soft Studio. Uh, how many of you guys heard of Wolverine Soft Studio? <laughs> uh, how many of you guys have gotten less than six hours sleep last night? <laughs> Making games is hard, um, obviously. Uh, getting into the games industry is debatably even harder. Um, that's why Studio was founded about five years ago, is to help people aspiring to get into the game industry with a path um, in. And um, every semester, we take a game from concept to launch in 12 weeks. It's kind of a pretty crazy schedule. Um, and at the end, we, we post them on, on Steam. I can go back and some of the games. These are some of our previous games. Um, uh, part of our mission, too, is also connecting people um, with the industry, uh, networking. Um, we have a lot of industry mentors. We have a lot of alumni who are in big gaming companies, and uh, they come back and advise. We also send some of our people to GDC every year um, for the last two years. That's our amazing opportunities to, to uh, I guess, you know, create your own path into the industry. Um, and with that, I'm going to introduce some of our uh, current games. Uh, this is what is known as Project Quest. We've been working on for the past two semesters. I'm really proud of this game. Um, I'm going to invite Jacob Robinson, project lead, up here to speak more about it. But uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, MQ. Right. Thank you guys. So Project Quest was a really fun project to work on for Wolverine Soft. There was a lot of firsts with this project, as I'm sure all of you who are on it are well aware. Um, this wasn't easy. I'm really proud of the team for pulling through. This was about a 60-person team across two semesters. That sounds like a big number, and it kind of is. But, you know, it was split across two semesters. We, we had a lot of people coming and going, and there was a lot of challenges involved in, um, you know, onboarding people to an existing project and, and you know, moving on from, from those people. So um, there are a lot of issues with that. I'm sure all of you who want to go into the industry will encounter those issues. So that's one of the things you can sort of learn about Wolverine Soft. Additionally, this is our first ever RPG, which is crazy considering, first of all, how long I've been in the studio since I'm such a RPG, big RPG fan. Additionally, we just have a very, really, really large RPG crowd at, um, at Wolverine Soft. So I think uh, this was a really fun project for all of us to work on. Again, it was really hard. It was also our first time having a dedicated narrative department. Um, which brought, again, a, a host of new challenges, and I, I think, you know, the game really worked well for it. Also, yeah, so the Steam release is coming soon. It's out on itch right now, so if you want to go play it later tonight or even over there, that, that'd be great. But, um, yeah, we have a bit of a trailer, a bit of a teaser trailer for you before it comes out on Steam, so enjoy. <laughs> Well done, team. Well done. We have a second game. Yeah, I'm going to speak up this one. Um, so I'm the project lead for Project Classic. Um, we're fortunate to have enough capacity now in Wolverine Soft to have two games running every semester. So this was a bit more of a traditional project. We did this one in one semester with a team of about 40 people. Uh, we, we did a case study of the, a game called Gunstar Hero. Um, that's, it's a run-and-gun um, platformer, and we ended up taking the uh, game mechanics of that and added an Elder Tor aesthetic to it. 
Um, so yeah, yeah, if you can pull up the trailer. Well done, team. Good stuff. Well, if this all sounds good to you, uh, we're opening applications uh, at some point for summer 2024. Um, and to be notified about that, just scan this QR code, uh, fill out the interest form, you will be emailed when applications roll out. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Okay, just a few more seconds, and four, and three, and two, and if you want it later, just contact me. I'll give you the QR code. Okay, the schedule for tonight, all right? We're currently in the intro. We're showing you game trailers. We've got a lot of very, very fun trailers ahead of you in just a few moments. Uh, at 7.45 or so, we're going to release you into the main hall, uh, and you'll have about two hours to play all the fantastic games out there, figure out which ones you like most, and then vote with that little QR code on all the posts, okay? Should be a fun time. We're gonna talk about the voting results, announce them, around 9.45 to 10, okay? You don't have to stick around the full time, but if you want to, it's usually a very, very fun moment, okay? Um, and remember, right, this voting, uh, not all game types, right, are great for this kind of voting, okay? So voting just for funsies, all right? No, no grades attached to it, none of that stuff. It is really fun to win, though. Okay, anyway, voting, 494showcase.com. You're going to go there. You can scan QR codes on the pillar to do that. If you go there on a desktop, you'll find some button in the bottom left so you have time you have left to vote. Click it, you'll go to a form, Okay. On your phone, it'll probably look like this here at the top. Not exactly sure why. Uh, okay, so a few thank yous before we get to the trailers. All right? Lots of marketing to make an event successful like this. We need a lot of people to enjoy all these fantastic games for our hardworking students. Big thanks to Steve Krang, uh, Emily France. Uh, I think Zach is actually, um, uh, is, uh, uh, I think, at a different uh, marketing job. Fantastic person. Emily France should be up there. Uh, Michael Clamorous does a wonderful job as well. Equipment and facilities, George Kroslek and Steven Rieger look, work extremely hard to make all that infrastructure out there work. Power, all that stuff. We used to blow out power in the Beister building. We don't anymore. They do an amazing job. Where are you? Thank you so much, team. Absolutely fantastic work, and you don't see the half of what they do for you. Absolutely amazing. Collaboration. Matthew Thompson, all the Pat 305 students. Matthew, are you here? Any Pat 305 students here? Fantastic. They do the music for our student games. It's a multi-course collaboration. Thank you so much for collaborating with us. Hey, my senior consultants, Pam and Dave Yarger, I appreciate everything you do. You are wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'll clap for you. Yes. Um, some, uh, some hugs very, very soon. Um, EMU SAG faculty for supporting our multi-university collaboration with this event. We really appreciate it. All the former East 494 professors, Dr. Mitchell Block, Professor Jeremy Bond, who is with us right there. Thank you so much. Um, and Professor Laird, uh, you do not make anything of quality in a single go, okay? You stand upon the shoulders of people who came before, and thankfully they did just a wonderful, wonderful job for this course in this university and this community. 
Um, thank you to all the 494 and UMICH alumni. I love to see your faces back around here again. Uh, and uh, thank you for updating me with all the cool, impactful stuff you're doing. A big thanks to the support, uh, uh, all of the Michigan CSC, all the faculty uh, for supporting our game dev around here and letting me teach uh, these super fun courses. Um, and perhaps most of all, thank you so much to my EECS 494 students. This is a hard course. You are tough people, and you did a wonderful job. Thank you so much. And my phenomenal staff. Okay, Anwa, are you here? Anwa Wu, absolutely phenomenal grader. She's helped us, I believe, for a couple semesters now. Uh, grading this course is like grading an exam every single week. It's very difficult on all of us, and she does a wonderful, wonderful job. Um, oh, it's playing. it's playing her trailer here. A big thanks to Alex Kalams. Thank you so much. Did a wonderful job. A, uh, a phenomenal IA who made Desktop Defender, one of our best games uh, that I talk about every single semester. God's place right there in our theming lecture in particular. It, I tell you, it was like playing a Windows XP game. Was anyone around during the XP era? You said, oh my goodness, absolutely incredible. Okay, uh, and uh, Ben Fang, where are you, Ben? Are you here, Ben? Shun you? Fantastic, fantastic IA, did an excellent job, got the cute GIF here, uh, made a very scary horror game. It's hard to have a horror game at a big, exciting event like this. They did it, did a great job, okay? All right, a couple quick things before we get to the trailers. There are new game dev courses on campus. This one, consider it. Lightweight course, learn Unreal Engine. It's a really good time, eeks440.com. Eeks498, make your own game engine from scratch. This course is probably a bit harder than 494. <laughs> So don't take this for 482, okay? Uh, but you will become extremely good at C++, Lua, and game engine architectural composition in general uh, if you take the course, x498.com. And SI311 returning uh, in two semesters. Natalie Fang, Professor Fang, are you here, actually? Does a phenomenal job. Uh, this is Games and UX, new course on campus. Uh, good way to uh, round out your career, okay? All right, everyone, here's how it's gonna work. We watch the trailers, they're very short, 45 seconds max, and then we're done. You get out there, you play these phenomenal games, you vote and have a great time, all right? First up, we have RoboZoo Laid Off by WildWork Games. Oh, well, Labs, WildWorks Labs. Next up, next up, we have Quack Attack by Pondside Games. All right, next up we have Dream Trapped by Clobus Game Studio.
Boy Haunted, Haunted by monsters and relics of the past. The new the friends lying late. Help Help him him find his new friends. Look at their powers and escape the dream. Dream trapped! Next up, we have Turbo Takeout by Nitro Neon. In a city where speed is current and the neon lights never dim, two ruthless drivers compete to deliver food at the most efficient speeds. Their appetite for success knows no bounds. But this city isn't big enough for the both of them. Drive. Dash. Deliver. Rev up your ride with unique abilities, stylish hats, and striking trails. Turbo Takeout. Are you ready to ride? Turbo Takeout! Next up, we have Bunker Bros by Post World Productions. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> when a new virus has ravaged the globe, in the dead and risen to consume the living, the only way to survive is to fight and to explore together. Two survivors controlling military technology must defend their bunker of working together. If the zombies get in, it's all over. So fight for your survival. <laughs> bunker Bros! <laughs> Next up, next up we have Before Last Shift by Blue Blood. You have one hundred message. I heard this your last shift, so let's go to the first time. Before last shift. We may need some of that nice piano music after that game. Next up, we have Spark Shift by Studio Eleven. Fire the power to teleport and work as a team to escape the facility. Discover new areas and challenges as you find your way to the exit. Can you shift your way out? Spark Shift! Next up, we have Steampunk Slasher by Jajaja. Ja ja. Do some Steampunk Slash, a game that has all your Steampunk and Slashing needs. 
you play as a silly little adventurer as you jump slash into this. A turn of festivals for an abandoned factory that's become overgrown with plants and monsters that dwell within. You'll need to think on your feet and be cautious as danger is all around you on the factory. Make sure to look before you leap and charge forward with bravery through multiple levels, each one more challenging than the last. The road ahead may be tough, but glory awaits. So what are you waiting for? Go play Steampunk Slash now. Steampunk Slasher! Next up is Hand of Light by Creative Business Unit 6. <laughs> Commander, and we forces are down by impasse, and we will require your leadership. Take control of your army. In this fast paced real time strategy game, using your best tactics to defeat the enemy. You will have a limited number of soldiers during the battle, each bearing unique weapons and abilities, allowing them to fill different roles. Leveraging these abilities combined with the masterful control of your army is the key of victory. As your strategies are deployed across all manner of battlefields, you will witness and the horrors and stories of war. Take command of your army in Hand of Light. Hand of Light! <laughs> Next up, we have The Forgotten Forest by Lutra Studio. You know nothing about this. Just listen to me. Just leave me alone. My life was so much better than ever. Well, what happened to you? I don't know. I will go with this. See, you were a good sister. 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 No one has survived this fight alone. The Forgotten Forest. Next up, we have The Blacksmith's Dungeon by Gray Box Studio. The ancient Romans divided their society into different social classes. Now history they only remembered in the warriors and the rulers. But what was a soldier without the sword? And what was a sword without a blacksmith to take it? Welcome to the blacksmith's dungeon, where you find you have a chance to live the glory you deserve. To develop your own unique battle town as you collect valuable resources and hold your very own weapons. Destroy the most vicious monsters of the enemy to grow stronger and extend the war to the light. Forge your own path. Create your own destiny. Because there's nothing worse than watching somebody else wield a weapon made for you. Blacksmith's Dungeon! <laughs> Alright, next up we have 8 Ball Brawl by Very Skilled Studios. This is your grandma's capability. Eight ball brawl. <laughs> Next up, we have Dead Beats by the Troublemakers. Place where nobody needs to 
find yourself trapped in the conflict of sinister dungeon. Whether the world is onslaught or consumed, seize the opportunity to retaliate with your own magic. Just discover these spells and scatter them around the deck. Seize the power of the effects. Unravel the mystery of the medieval dungeon. Reunite your long lost companion and escape together from the sea. Deadbeats! All right. Next up, we have Shadow Lab by Shadow Lab Games. Shadow Lab. Next up, we have Blind Descent by Funtendo of America. <laughs> Get sent to the team if you find yourself alone with one goal, collect the samples, and return them to the submarine. Play a game unlike any other, and then we have to use the advanced methods to ensure you have no idea of where you're going. Use your instruments to gather information on your surroundings, avoid mines, defense, and drawing pools. But be careful, because you only have so much power, and once that's gone, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> Blind Descent! <laughs> Next up, we have The Story of Drayden by Pop-Up Games. There, there once was a poor old village. Then bandits would frequently pillage. <laughs> but then a dragon appeared, and by bandits he was feared. Oh! oh. As he helped with the tillage, <laughs> smith flames, stop foes, and gather ore to help this little town become something more. As you get to the night, be ready to fight this dreadful, dragon war. The story of Drayden. Story of Drayden! And last up, we have Kai Lost Waters by Waterworks Studio. You awaken with no memories of your past. Except for one thing, this ancient power lost to time feels familiar to you. Channel this power to move water however you please. Activate ancient technology, push obstacles, and whatever else your heart desires. There are dangerous obstacles ahead of you. Journey is just beginning. May the water guide you. Kai, lost waters. All right, everyone, remember you're going to go out there, play the games, ask questions to the devs, and remember to vote. We'll see you later. Have a great night. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs>
All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us on the stream. Uh, please play the games, even from home or from afar. Uh, and remember to vote. Uh, your vote counts too, okay? Have fun, everyone. Uh, we will see you later. Bye-bye.